بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد فاتح لما أقولك وخاتم لما سبق ناصر حق بحق وهادي إلى سيراتك المستقيم وعلى آله حق كذه ومكداه عظيم <coughs> So we're um, continuing on with the um, study of the مختصة of, uh, of the أخداري of Imam أخداري um, I wanted just to um, go over, or I had to, I want to make one correction. Last week, I believe um, uh, someone asked about the particular tasbih or um, glorification, which is said in Ruku. And I said that. Um, that it should be subhanallah he will be hungry he's subhanallah he will be and it should be said three times uh the mashur i, I, I want to correct myself the mashur or the relied upon opinion in the maliki school is that it could be any tespi as long as it's three times and um yeah so any tespi subhanallah 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 Subhanallah, Malikul Quddus. Any tasbih, any glorification, as long as at least three times. The particular one which I said, um, that's something, something particular to uh, people of uh, a certain path, the TJ and the way. Okay, so I just wanted to make that correction. And uh, I also have Brother Ali post in the group the, uh, the Tashahud. And I wanted to just read the Tashahud, or recite the Tashahud for you, so that you could um, hear how it sound. <clears throat> and um, I think when he put it up in the group, he put it in the group with the um, transliteration. Yeah, so it's very important to um, memorize the Tashahud, which is said uh, during the Jalsa or during the sitting, period of the second and the last rakat. And the words of the uh, the Tashahud, according to the school of Imam Malik, is At-Tahiyatullahi, Zakiyatullahi, Tayyibatu, Salawatullahi, Assalamu alayka, Ayyuhan Nabiyu, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibad Allah salihin. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu an Muhammad abduhu wa rasul. Um, so this, so it means like greetings and purification and prayers of Allah be upon you, O oh, you Prophet, as what, well, and the mercy and blessings of God be upon us and upon the righteous servants of Allah. I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is, is the servant of Allah. So that should, again, so that is the, the uh, Tashahid, and that is what it said um, during the second and third part of the city, part of the Salat. Sometimes it comes in different forms, like without the word, Zakiyat Allahi. But according to the way in which we're learning the Maliki school, you, you want to add, so it's Atahiyatullah, Yazakiyatullah, Tagyibatu, Salawatullah, until the end of the, uh, to the end of the supplication. Now, so with that, I think we'll continue where we left off. So, um, Brother Ali, right, uh, let me see, go up a little more, okay, right there, yeah. and so he continues in the, the Fala'i, uh, for the virtuous acts of the Salat. Uh, he says, um, Sir Kabul Ruku, about the Sir Sanita Sub, the Yujus, 
will you choose بعض الركوع والدعاء بعض التشاهد الثانية and um, so it is permissible to um, make a supplication after the the second tashahud. So this is going to be in the last rakat. Right? And then there's, there's also the Salat of Ibrahimiya. Uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama salaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim. You know, Allah send peace and blessings upon the, our Master Muhammad, upon his family, as you send peace and blessings upon the Master of uh, uh, Abraham. Which this is also uh, this is also said. So uh, basically, th there's a number, there's a plethora of du'a or supplications which one can say at this point um, during the prayer, after the second tashahud and the last rakat. He says, he says, will you kunu tashahdu athanat atwal min ula, wa ta'amimu bisara wa tahriku sab'a fi tashahud. And so the um and so the se the second tashahad should be longer than the first, right? Meaning with with the supplications which I said after, but and so a person um says the the psalms to the right. I'm sorry, turning the head to the right during the salam. So when the so after the uh, prayer is over, remember going back, we said that the prayer is over when a person says salam to the right. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. So he says here, turning the head to the right during the salam, and then he also mentions uh, moving the index finger during during the tashahud. So when a person is doing, what does he mean here? So when a person is actually saying the tashahud, then the index finger, the pointer finger on the right hand, uh, it is from the virtuous acts to move it. According to Imam Malik, um, this is done like in a circular motion. So they're actually pointing with their finger during the duration of the tashahat. So the entire time that they're saying that the uh, tashahat, then they are moving the, like their pointer finger. So this is what he means here. Now, so now he's going to go to the makruha to salat, or the things which are disliked during the prayer. So go up, uh, Brother Ali. So we talked about the virtuous things. We talked about the uh, obligatory things. So now we're going to talk about the, right there. The, so the things which are uh, disliked during the prayer. And so he says, what he, um, he says, وَيَقْرُوهُ تَفَاتُ فِي صَلَاةِ تَغْمِيدُ عَيْنَيْ وَبَسْمَلَ وَتَعَاذُ فِي فَرِيدَةِ وَيُجُوزُ فِي نَفْرِ وَكُوفَ عَلَى رِجْلٍ وَاحِدِتٍ إِلَّا أَنْ يُطُلُّ كِيَامِهِ وَأَكْثِرَانَ رِجْلَيْهِ So he says, the first, among the first things which I dislike to do during the prayer, he said, is looking around. Right, so when a person is actually in the salat, according to the Malikiya, they should actually be looking, they should be looking ahead, right? They should be looking straight ahead. So they're standing in the direction of the Qibla or in the direction of, uh, of Mecca, of the Kaaba. They're praying, they should be looking directly ahead. It is disliked to be looking around, being distracted in the prayer. And then he says, also closing the eyes. Um, some, you know, some people say that closing the eyes during the prayer it helps them concentrate. Uh, some, of the, some of our scholars have said that actually, um, not closing the eyes helps one concentrate because it forces one to um, really focus, right? Uh, but some ulama that I've sat with, they said that, you know, if, if one really, really needs to close one's eyes in order to concentrate, they can, but generally speaking, it is disliked. It's, it seemed like as a crutch, right? And then he says, saying the basmala, wa billahi min shaitanir rajim, during the father prayer, but it's permissible during the nafila. What does he mean here? 
So um, also last week, I think uh, Brother Ayu brought this up about um, reciting the Basmila. So in the Fatiha, of course, we said the Fatiha has seven verses. <clears throat> now, according to the Malikiyah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, according to the yeah. So according to the Malakia, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is not an actual verse of the Fatiha. Right? <clears throat> so the actual, the first verse of the Fatiha, according to the Malakia is, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. So it's Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmudi. And to the last, you know, and to the end of it. So wala dali, that's considered the last verse, according to the Malakia. So, and this is uh, based upon, there's a uh, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Where it's a hadith Qudsi, actually, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah said that he has divided this prayer between him and the servant. And he says, so Allah says, when the servant says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah then says, my servant has praised me. So this is proof, according to Imam Malik, that the Fatiha actually begins with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Now there is a minor opinion within the school which uh, says that the Basmila can be recited, although it's not part of the, um, the Fatiha. So in any regards, the Basmila is not part of the Fatiha according to our understanding. And the, the mashhur opinion or the relied upon opinion is that the Basmila is actually not to be recited. So this is why he listed as one of the Makruhat Salat, because the Malikiyah in particular are very particular about um, adding things or adding words to the Salat. I said, but there is a minor opinion though, because there are some ahadith um, which uh, state that is okay to recite the Basmala, but the mashur is the person doesn't recite the Basmala, except for in the Nafila prayers. And the same thing with saying, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, or seeking refuge in Allah from Satan the curse before one starts the recitation. The mashur opinion is that one does not say that. If we're talking about a father prayer, so one of the five canological prayers which one must perform every day. But the scholars say that there's no problem if one recites the ta'awwud uh, or the seeking refuge in Allah or any, or any of the other du'a and the basmila and the nafila prayers and the prayers which are not part of the five prayers, the five mandatory prayers. So any of the, um, any of the nafila, so the two before or, or, or you know, the two before Fajr or any of these things or the four before the whore, or the ones after things. So any of the nafila prayers, they say that it's not disliked, but if a person does so in the, in the obligatory prayers, then it is disliked. And so then one of the, uh, he says, is standing on one foot, and what, unless the prayer is long, this is also from the things which are disliked, uh, and putting the feet together meaning uh, putting one's feet together, like, so when a person is standing, their feet are so close that they're touching with one's own feet. This is also from the things which are disliked. Or um, smashing the feet upon another person's feet. And you'll see this a lot, you know, people when they uh, line up for salat, a lot of times they actually touch their feet together it's, it's so they actually you know smashed their feet together and this is based upon a, a hadith their understanding of a hadith of the prophet وسلم, when he said uh to stand shoulder to shoulder foot to foot it is um you know one does not have to do that so our understanding of this hadith is that this commandment was given in order for people to make straight lines not to stand in that manner for the duration of the prayer, right? So basically, when one is standing in prayer, one should be standing at a, you know, at, 
one's feet should be at a normal distance. Like they shouldn't be extremely too far to where like a person is, you know, basically trying to do the splits or whatever, trying to touch another person's feet and they shouldn't be smashed together so that they're touching their own feet. And then in one of the other Makru Hatsasa, he said, putting a coin or something else in one's mouth. So this is like, um, or placing anything distracting in one's pocket, sleeve, or, or Right. So basically one shouldn't have anything on the on them which distracts them from the prayer. Like so a person placing he mentioned the example of a person placing a coin in one's mouth or something. Or, you know, in a modern day sense, you know, uh, one placing like gum in, in in one's mouth or something. Maybe a person may not spit their gum out before they go to prayer. But this is actually probably worse than um the the um example given because like you know some of the juices and everything a person could swallow it and that would totally invalidate the prayer so a person also shouldn't have anything anything which is on like in a person's like in a person's pocket which may distract the person from the prayer i'm not saying you have to totally empty out your pockets when you come to salat but like if a person has something in their pockets or anything which will distract them in any of the movements of the prayer and then this is uh, this is from the things which are disliked. So if a person has something, for example, in their back pocket, which would distract them when they're in the jalsa, in the sitting position, then this would then this would be one of the makruhata salat. This would be something which is uh, disliked. So anything which distracts the person from the prayer here, th this is what he's talking about, right? And likewise, like a person shouldn't pray in in an area which would distract them from the prayer. Um, so I say, for example, uh, a person praying in a place which is extremely cold and they don't have to, right? Placed in that position, if a person does that, then this would be one of the things which is disliked because a person is not supposed to be, you know, thinking about covering up or being warm or something like this. So one should be completely at ease and with one's mind concentrated strictly on the prayer. So anything which is done, which takes one away, hard away from that, this is from the Makruhat of the prayer. One moment. Brother, I think you got muted. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. I'm like, what the? <laughs> One second. All right. Okay. So, uh, go, so go back up a little bit. On the text, I'm going to make sure. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so thinking about matters of the world. So anything, so when one comes to the Salat, thinking about anything worldly related, this is also from the things which are uh, disliked in a prayer. He said anything which would distract one from being in a humble state of khushua, humility, uh, in the prayer. So like I said, any, like praying in the place. Like praying in a place where there's a lot of noise, which would get one to be thinking about other than the salat. This is also from the things which are uh, disliked in the prayer. And so um, the next section, he says, Fasu as salatu, or nulul adin, Tashrufu bihi kulubul musalim, Wala yana luhu illa khashirun, for either ataita illa salati. ففرغ قلبك من دنيا وما فيها واشتغل بمراقبه ملاك الذي تصلي لوجهه right so he says um he says prayer has an immense light that causes the hearts of those who pray to radiate none will attain it except those who are fearful in their prayer so if you come to the prayer empty your heart of the dunya and what it contains. 
one quick note. So the previous practice, the previous chapters, Afwan, he was talking about outward aspects of prayer. Now he's talking about like some, just a short uh, section or commenting on some of the inward aspects of the prayer and the quality of the prayer. All right, so that's why the director, the direction switches here a bit. So he says, uh, preoccupy yourself with your Lord, the one to whom you are uh, praying and believe that the prayer is submissiveness and humbleness to Allah through the standing, the bowing, and the prostrations. It is exalt, exaltation and glorification of Allah through the takbir, the tasbih, and the dhikr. He says, to so protect your prayer is it is the greatest act of worship. Do not allow the devil to play with your heart and distract you from the prayer to the point that your heart is blind and that you are prevented from experiencing the pleasures of the lights of the prayer. Uh, you must maintain khushur or submissiveness during the prayer as the prayer prevents foul and evil acts because of that submissiveness. Seek assistance from Allah. And he is the best assistant. So basically what he's saying is, now in addition to all of those outward aspects um, which we talked about, the main thing or the most important thing is to have focus in prayer. And everything about the prayer is a form of remembrance. So when a person is standing, when a person is bowing, when a person is prostrating, all of these are signs of exaltation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is what a person should be concerned with. One of my uh, teachers, he said that when a person stands in prayer, then like they should imagine the Kaaba in front of them, right? They should imagine the Kaaba in front of them. They should imagine praying in front of the Kaaba, right? He said, and a person should imagine the angels on the right and to the left. And a person should imagine or, or, or picture the grave which is in front of them. You know, it comes in a narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that one of the Sahabi, one of the companions of the Prophet, he had an arrow lodged into his leg and they couldn't uh, take the arrow out because it would be too painful. And so this companion, he said, he said, take it out when I'm praying. He said, therefore, I won't notice it. Right. This is how engrossed they were in their prayer. This is how focused they were in their prayer. Their physical pain, it they wouldn't even feel it during their prayer because they were so engrossed in their prayer. Right. And so this is why also it's very important that you know we learn as much as much as we can about the prayer, that we learn the prayers in Arabic and we recite the prayers in Arabic because it has a special effect. Right? It, has a, it has a special effect on the heart. And if a per person is focusing on the trust me, like when, 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 you're read, when you're reciting it in the Arabic and when you're focusing on it as it was revealed, it's totally different. One brother said it's like, like, it's like reading the Quran in 3D. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're literally experiencing it. And in some of, subhanAllah, in some of the other books of fiqh, like they, they, they mention certain things about the prayer like um, each position of the prayer is an affirmation of the reality of the prophet, peace be What do we mean by that? So for example, when a person is standing, like this is like reminiscent or, uh, of the letter Aleph, which is the first letter in the Arabic language, which is uh, uh, what, how you spell one of the names of the prophet, the name of Ahmed. And when a person goes into ruku, when a person goes into the bowing position, this is symbolic of the letter Ha, which is the next letter in spelling of Ahmed, the praise one, which is the name of the prophet, peace be upon him. And then the mean, when a person goes into um, uh, prostration, this is the mean, this is the letter mean. And when a person is sitting, this is the letter Dab. And so this spells Ahmed. And so the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was a, like his, 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 his literal name was a manifestation of praising Allah, right? 
Um, you can't get these things from like not being acquainted with the nuances and the delicacies uh, of the Arabic language. And so um, I highly encourage everyone, you know, to take this very serious and to learn as much as they can about the Salat. Learn, you know, uh, all of these supplications, all of these tasbihat, which we do in the prayer. Learn them. Know what it is that you're saying so that you can focus in the prayer. It's not enough to just like, uh, just be rattling off some, you know, incantations in the foreign language, you know, to where you don't understand the meaning. I mean, it's good, you'll have benefit, but you'll get more benefit out of it if you could talk, if you could totally focus on what you're saying and be engrossed in it, All right? And so um, there's another point here, he says that, uh, That he said, you must, man, you must maintain khushua, submissive during the prayer, as the prayer prevents foul and evil acts. So this is so that, this is actually a verse from the Quran where it says, you know, salat that kind of tanha anul fahsha wa munka, that the prayer prevents foul and indecent acts. What does this mean? It means that if one has some bad habits, they have some bad deeds, which they do. If you are performing a little salat, then you will then you will eventually leave that act. There is no way for you to be praying and trying and praying correctly and everything that you're gonna just continue, you know, forever in doing indecent acts. No, the salat will eventually prevent it. And why is this? Because five times a day, you're taking time out of your day, taking time out of your schedule you know, to just stop for a few minutes to remember Allah. So how can a person, for example, pray Vuha and say, for example, they were engaged in some indecent act before Vuha. So then, but you know, out of their uh, uh, reverence to Allah, they stop and they perform the prayer. How can a person immediately, you know, as soon as they get done with the, the Vuha prayer, go back to doing whatever they were doing, right? They're, they're gonna have some, um, the, they're gonna uh, 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 have some, a uh, conscience. Right, they're going to be less likely to go back to doing what they were doing. And say, for example, they you know fell into something between duha and asa. Okay, when asa comes in, they pray the asa. The same thing is going to happen, right? And to eventually, a person is going to leave off whatever bad habit, whatever indecent act which they you know uh, which was plaguing them. They're eventually going to leave it off. And so the salah is it's like an exercise, also, just like you exercise your muscles, right? The salat is a spiritual exercise to exercise your, your, your inner being and to correct your life from the inside. But trust me, you're not going to uh, 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 get to whatever, you know, spiritual uh, uh, goal or attainment without the salat. This is the manual, right? So Allah, he created the human being and he, and he gave us a manual to live by. If you do this, then you will attain this. You know, just like when you buy a car, it comes with, it comes with the manual. You know, it teaches you the upkeep, you know, what to do, what not to do, you know, when to um, do oil changes and things like that. And you can ignore it to your own detriment. But, you know, when the car breaks down and doesn't perform right, don't blame the manufacturer. The same thing with the salat. You know, Allah, you know, has, has blessed us with Islam and he's blessed us with these five prayers, which is the bare minimum, by the way, <laughs> one should be doing. This is not like something which is, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not considered uh, excessive. This is the bare minimum that one should be doing, right? You know, so so don't bl don't don't blame the creator if a person is not, you know, living according to your manual and not following the prescription in which he has given in order for people to be successful. Now, and so. Uh, this, let me see, yeah. Uh, and so uh, at this point, he, he, he goes into another section with the Ahwal al-Salat. He says that the Salat, he said, لِلصَّلَاةِ مَفْرُودَ سَبْعَ أَحْوَالِ مُرْتَبَةً تُعَدَّ عَلَيْهَا أَرْبَةً مِنْهَا عَلَى وُجُوبِ وَثَلَاثَ عَلَى إِسْتَحَابَةً فالتي على وجوب أولها 
القيام بغير استناد ثم قيام باستناد ثم جلوس بغير استناد ثم جلوس باستناد فترتي بين هذه عربة على الوجوب إذا قدر على حاله منها وصلي حالة دونها بطل صراتي okay. so he says here that um, he says that the obligatory prayer has, that, has seven order ways that it can be performed but as the Buddha's words keep four of them in order and recommend to keep three in order um, so the first is standing without leaning on something the second is standing while leaning on something the third is standing without leaning on something and the fourth is standing while leaning on something well, so what does he mean here here he's talking about an obligatory prayer the different ways to do it right and this is according to one's ability so when a person stands for prayer they have to they have the ability to stand without leaning on something so that's the first uh the first part he talks about or they can stand but they have to lean on something right or they perform their prayer sitting so this is in case if they're sick or something right without leaning on something or they perform a sitting while leaning on while leaning on something so basically uh, a person what he means here is that a person just must basically go through these um these stations like uh dependent upon a person's ability so basically he's saying that if you have the ability to stand without in regards to the, the obligatory prayers if you have the ability to stand without leaning on something then you must do it and if not then you can stand while leaning on something that's basically what he's saying so go up again uh, brother Adi. he said this is a uh, there's a book of story to maintain the order between these four if one is able to pray in one way and praise in a subsequent way then this prayer is invalid so meaning if one has the if one has the ability to pray without any assistance but he leans on something so much so for example that if one were to remove it that he will fall then this prayer is invalid so basically you know don't be lazy if you could perform the prayer and all of its um uh stations and all of its nuances and everything then do it um he says uh one second the three which are recommended to keep in order the fourth the one who was unable to pray before a bunch of fashion prays are to pray on the right side on the left side and on one's back so this is like if a person is sick so if a person is sick and a person can't pray um standing or sitting if they're that sick then they should pray on their right side facing the Qibla. And if they can't pray on their right side facing the Qibla, then they should pray on their left side facing the Qibla. And if they can't pray on their left side facing the Qibla, then they should pray on one's back facing the Qibla. Right? He said, if one does not maintain the order between these three, his prayer is valid. <clears throat> so what does he mean here? Meaning like if you don't try the... Uh, the right side first. If you if you just go to the left side, then it's okay. The leaning that what uh, the leaning uh, that one would invalidate the prayers for the one who can do it without it is that one would cause a person to fall if that thing were to fail. That's why I just previously mentioned if a person would not fail uh, with the uh, falling of what he was leaning on, then it is my crew. It is dislike. As for the nafila prayer. It is permissible for one who can stand to pray sitting down, but he gets only half the reward for it. What does this mean? So we're not talking about any of the obligatory prayers now. So we're not talking about Fajr, we're not talking about Zuhur, we're not talking about uh, Asr, or Maghrib, or Isha. So any of the Nafila prayers, you know, any of the prayers which was done either before or after them, you can actually pray any of these, like you don't have to be standing up to do it. You can actually pray them in any position. He says, but if a person does this, then they only get half the reward for it. They don't get the entire reward 
for standing and doing all of the other actions of the prayer. Um, he said, it is permissible to enter the prayer sitting. He's talking about the national prayer, not, 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 not the obligatory prayer. It is permissible to uh, enter the prayer sitting and then stand thereafter or to enter it standing and then to sit thereafter. But if you enter the prayer with the intention to perform it standing, in which case it would be prohibited for him to sit afterwards, right? So if a person entered the nafila with the, uh, with the intention to do it standing, he can't like switch it up in the middle and be like, okay, I'm gonna sit down because that's considered like a, an oath or another, which one made to Allah. He said, uh, and the implication here is that actually one would have to, you know, do some sort of uh, 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 like fasting or something, you know, because one broke an oath. So he says, it is obligatory to make up any prayers that one owes, and it is not permissible to be careless in that. Whoever makes up every day, five days worth of missed prayers is not a, a careless person. So let's stop right there. So what is he talking about? It is the consensus amongst all of the over or overwhelming majority, I should say, of the Muslim scholars that a person must make up any missed prayers. So any prayer which a person, when we mean missed prayers, we mean, of course, the five prayers. So if a person misses Duhu or a person misses Asa or something, they must make that prayer up. Even if there's like years worth of prayers to be made up, this is why it's very important, you know, that people don't get, that people don't get behind, right? Because some people have like literally years of prayers to make up. And so he, and so, and this is based upon the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he says it's the first thing which Allah will question people about on the day of judgment will be the prayer. And if the prayer is sufficient, then everything else will be sufficient, right? Because when a person says their shahada, when they say, when they become a Muslim, that's the actual contract which one is entering into with Allah. And one of the things which they said that they would do is perform the five daily prayers. Again, it's not for Allah, it's for your own good, as we just mentioned. So a person must uphold their end of the bargain, so to speak. And so a person must perform all of the prayers. And he says that uh, if a person did get behind, right, they got months or whatever to, uh, you know, they got months behind, they were negligent in their prayer. He said, if a person made up like um, five days worth of prayers in one day, then they would not be considered careless. If they did not, if, if they weren't making up like five days worth of prayer in one day, they would be considered careless. You know, um, alhamdulillah, you know, you know, I, you know, I've been Muslim, my father's Muslim and everything, but like, you know, there was a time when, you know, I myself had, uh, you know, <laughs> during my teenage years, you know, I, I, I was not praying regularly and things like this. And so like for a long time, what I used to do is that whenever I would um, pray, uh, you know, when I did started back praying regularly again, uh, what I would do is that I would, whenever I would uh, say, for example, pray Fajr, like before Fajr, I would pray another Fajr for Qadha, which is called Qadha. So whenever you make up a prayer, that's considered, it's, it's called Qadha. And so I would make up a prayer and then I would do the one that was actually in you know, at that time. And I did this for a long time until I, you know, um, due to my calculations, you know, to where I was uh, caught up. So inshallah, do not get behind on your prayers. Perform them diligently. It's, it only takes a few minutes and it doesn't take a long time. You know, you don't want to be, you know, behind on prayers and everything. And then Shaytan begins to whisper to you, you know, and then a, a person can fall into hopelessness. Oh, you know, well, you know, what's the use of me doing? I got so many to make up. I don't even know how many I got to do. So I might as well not do a lot. Don't get like that. First of all, you know, Allah forgives all sins, right? Uh, uh, and all shortcomings and mistakes, do as much as you can. I said, but the most important thing is to not get behind in that, you know, in that manner. Now, he said he must make them up in the order that he missed them. And so this is um, 
particular to the Malik here too. So what does he mean by this? So say for example, if um, I didn't pray Fajr, so I overslept, I didn't pray Fajr. And I woke up like right before Zuhr time. And then I prayed Zuhr. Um, according to our way, this is incorrect. When one wakes up, one should pray the Fajr, even though the time is out. So when they wake up and it's, it's Zuhr time, then they pray the Fajr or the Sub, uh, Qadha, and then they pray the Zuhr, right? And this is with all the prayers. He says, so, uh, uh, yeah, according to our way, we make them up in, in the order in which they were missed. He said, if the prayer was a traveler's prayer, then he makes it up as a traveler prayer. So like when a person is um, traveling, we know that a person can shorten and, and, and combine prayers together. So say, for example, a person was traveling and they didn't stop to pray Vuhar and Asa for you know whatever strange reason that, that, that they didn't do that. Um so say for example now it's 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 Maghrib and they you know they're at their destination. So they have to make up the Vuhar and the Asr, but alhamdulillah uh they only have to make it up according to the rules of the traveler. So they would so, so they can they could um you know they, they can shorten the prayers and combine the prayers because they missed them while they were travelers. All right. Um, he says, maintaining the order between the present prayers and between the small amount of prayers is obligatory if one remembers. A small amount of prayers is four. If a person owes four or less prayers, he must pray it before the present prayer, even if the time were to go out. So that's basically, you know, uh, what what I just said, basically, you know, when you when, when you make them up, make them up in the order. Even if, like I said, say for example, it's Asa, you know, and you missed uh, uh, Subh and you missed uh, Dhuha, pray Subh and Dhuha first, and then pray Asa. Keep them uh, uh, in in order. That's what he's saying here. So, um, before we continue because this section is almost over. Are there any questions? I have a question. Will there be access? Will we have access to the replay? Yes. Uh, it, it should be on um, Brother Ali. I think he's going to post it on um, YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll give you the link afterwards, sis. Thank you. Questions? <clears throat> Any more questions? <clears throat> okay. I have just a couple if no one else has anything. Uh, go ahead. Bismillah. Um, when laying on one's back, when it says facing the Qibla, is that with one's head laying toward the Qibla, pointing toward the Qibla? Right. Okay. Um, and and so, then, and so, and, and so you notice he he had put uh, the right side and the left side first, and then we're praying on one's back as the last, as the last mm -hmm. uh, condition, and that is when actually one's feet is toward the kibla. But in the one's first feet. two, with so 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 with laying on the right side and laying on the left side, your head is towards the kibla. Mm -hmm. Laying on one's back, your feet is towards the kibla. Your feet, okay. Okay, I thought okay. I'd heard that it wasn't good to like stretch out your feet in that direction. That's okay. Sorry. Again, this is this this is due to um, one's ability. So remember that the the, the 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 first position was if a per person is sick, right? So they can't stand, they can't sit. So they're so they actually have to pray laying down. So you pray again with the, with the head towards the kibla laying on the right hand side okay you can't do that left hand side okay you can't do that because you're back into for maybe you're so sick that you can't get on your side and get in that position so now you pray on your back with the feet towards the kibla so basically 
So basically, there's no there's no excuse for a person to not pray. <laughs> right. Um, and then you mentioned that leaving the prayer with the um, Nawafil prayers that you in, that it's like an oath. Yeah. So 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 yeah. So what's meant there is like say for example, a person entered the Nawafil prayer with the intention to pray standing, mm -hmm. right? But they didn't. So in the second rakat, they decided to sit because it is normally permissible to sit during the Nawafil prayer. Mm -hmm. In that case, it, like a person would owe something. They would owe another. Okay, so the expiation for that is just to make up the prayer? Yeah. Is that Okay, not so. There's no, there's no fasting because I've heard for for an oath sometimes you would have to yeah, fast. Yeah, so, 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 sometimes there's a, the, the, so, sometimes there is a fast. I said, but um, I can I can check and see, but you know, just do it over. Okay, okay, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Um, and the last is uh, in the text it says, whoever makes up five days worth of missed prayers is not a careless person. Does that mean yeah. five days worth in one day or five prayers in one day? Yeah, so I mentioned that, um, I, I didn't go over it in detail. Yeah, so no, no, that means five days worth of prayer. Five that's days what, worth of prayer, a day. A day, that's if a person has a, you know, like a lot, you know, some some people have years, like, like me, like at one point in time, it sucks a lot, I had like, <laughs> A couple of years worth of prayers to do, uh, and I was, um, you know, I was, I was, I was making them up. But and alhamdulillah, I think I made them up. Um, so yeah, so, so, so a so person you, is so, sinful. For yeah, not so, so a, a person, so if a person get behinds in the prayer, you know, that much, he said, a person would not be considered careless if they made up five days worth of prayer in one day. So that's what twenty five, what five ten, it's what twenty five set up. Hmm. And again, just to make sure, I just want to make sure I'm hearing this right. Carelessness is sinful. Yes. So the way to avoid sin would be you must maintain that yeah. minimum of five days worth every day. Yeah. Is if you got any, that minute. If there's is there any difference of opinion on that? Or uh, is there that not a, not that I know of, not in our school. Okay. Okay. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Here. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, so folks, shall I maintain the prayer? Um so go up a little bit, uh brother Ali. Yeah, so after this section we're gonna stop and then um we may finish the text next week. I think we're gonna finish it next week. But he says, because the next chapter, so next week, I'll just do the chapter on Sahu, on the prostration of forgetfulness, and the text should be done. Uh, we're thinking about Thursday, around the same time, just having just strictly questions, just coming up Thursday. So we won't actually read from the text. We'll just do strictly questions, and then we'll finish I'm thinking the last chapter next week. And um, yeah, alhamdulillah, we'll finish the text and we'll get certificates to the people, you know, who finished the text. So it says, one who owes Qadar prayers is not to offer his nafila prayers. Thus, he is not to pray Salat al Duha or the nightly Ramadan prayers. The only thing that is permissible for him is the Shafa, the Witter the Fajr, the two Eids, uh, uh, Khusuf, the Istiqsa, or the drop prayer. It is permissible for a group that owes the same prayer to pray in congregation if it is exactly the same number. If it is exactly the same prayer, I find. If a person forgets how many prayers are owed, he prays an amount that leaves no doubt. So what does he mean here? If a person has missed prayers, 
you know, they got all of these missed prayers we've been talking about. They should not be doing any nafila prayers outside of the ones mentioned here. So no four before the whore, no four after, no, you know, the ones before, uh, 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 you know, four before Asr, two after Maghrib, uh, uh, you know, four after, none of that. Uh, not, not even the, um, he said the Salat al-Tarawiyah, which is the, the night prayers during Ramadan, which I said in, in, in congregation, right? They should not be doing any of those nafila prayers until they have made up the obligatory prayers, right? Because the obligatory prayers is what you actually owe. So how are you going to, you know, um, be praying other prayers which you don't actually owe and you still have a debt, basically? He said the exception to that is uh, the Shafa and the Witta. So this is, so 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 Witta, the Shafa and the Witta is a prayer, is a nafila prayer, which is said after Isha. It's either one or three rakat or in any odd number of rakat which made your um your nafila prayers an odd number right so in the maliki school it, it can even be one rakat if 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 a person is going to do three then the two so, so the way they would perform it they would perform two rakats shafa then they would do a salam you know salam out after the second rakat and then they would do one more with him so they would be three so you can do that one. You can do the 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 fajr me, meaning the ragah before the morning prayer, and you can do the the two eid salat. So uh, after Ramadan, you know, um, there's the salat al eid, um, and there's you know salat al. I mean, there's the uh, the eid al adha at the uh, at the end of the Hajj season. So you you, you can do those, but um. And you can and you could do the, the 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 eclipse prayers, the lunar and the solar eclipse prayers. But other than but other than that, a person should not be doing any nafila until they have made up all of their obligatory prayers. So he said um, he said it, it is principle for a group that owes the same prayer to pray it in congregation if it is exactly the same prayer. So you know. If we all owe Zohar, you know, we, we, we could we could pray Zohar and Qadah. Right. If a person forgets how many prayers are owed, he prays an amount that leaves no doubt. Again, this is for people who, you know, <clears throat> fall off for a long time and they, you know, they don't know how many prayers they have to make up, then they would just say, you know, if if they thought they had two months of prayers to make up, okay. Make up two and a half months of prayer. And one should be uh, safe at that point. So we're going to stop here uh, for this week. Like I said, so Thursday, this coming up Thursday, same time, it's just going to be questions. Any questions you got, ask it. Because inshallah, the following Monday, we should, we should complete the text. And um, when we complete the text, like I said, we'll get certificates out for the people who completed the text. And if you want, we can go on to a higher book of fiqh, because there are higher books. This is basically just a primer. But I wanted to uh, do some aqidah too. So I'm, I'm thinking we'll have a class um, like on the essentials of Islam, basically talking about uh, the basic theology of Islam. How do we believe in Allah? What is mandatory to believe in Allah? What's impermissible to believe about Allah? What's possible to, to believe about Allah? And this messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that'll be called like essentials, essentials of Islam one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we'll probably start that class the Monday after next, inshallah. I say, um, for those who wanna dive deeper into fiqh, to do some higher books, like maybe like the Risala or the Izia, which covers more topics than prayer and Tahara, and actually they go into far greater detail. Um, then you know we can do we can we can do those too. So with that, inshallah, um, we'll end. And like I said, Thursday, it'll be it'll just be all questions. 
So with that, wa la'asa illa insana fi khusu illa al-ladhina amin wa amiru salihati wa tuwasu bil-haqqi wa tuwasu bil-salih. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.